Hi everyone. Let's do a little bit of work today with oxygen analyzers. So I know in school you probably get very little exposure to oxygen analyzers. I don't know, maybe your program doesn't even have one. I know you're going to be hard pressed to actually find one in clinical practice to use, but the MBRC may ask you a few questions about them. So let's just talk about the two main type of analyzers, how they work in common test questions, okay? So um, first of all, that I need you to know, when we're measuring oxygen, the FiO2, we're going to use oxygen analyzers, okay? They are categorized as types. So these are electrochemical oxygen analyzers. What that means is both of these analyzers that we're going to talk about rely on a chemical reaction to produce a flow of electrons or currents, okay? They're not going to ask you about that. You may need to know that they are categorized as electrochemical oxygen analyzers. You do need to know there are two types, the galvanic and the polarographic. All right, so here's how I keep them straight. The galvanic one, I call it a galvanic fuel cell. And I'll show you why that keeps things straight in just a few minutes. And the other one's just known as the polarographic. In clinical practice, I'm going to tell you if you find one, it's going to be a polarographic. You're going to be hard pressed to see a galvanic any longer. Okay, so this is a picture of a galvanic fuel cell. Okay, that's how I remember a galvanic fuel cell because this thing on the end is called a fuel cell. And it must be called a fuel cell when you're talking about a galvanic oxygen analyzer. Okay, so galvanic oxygen analyzers. It creates a current as a result of oxid oxidation and reduction of O2. So basically, inside this fuel cell, there's some electrolyte solution and it creates a chemical reaction, okay? That's about all you need to know, all right? Now, what you do need to understand is it doesn't actually measure the FiO2. It measures the partial pressure of oxygen. So the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere bears down on that sensor. The sensor picks up the pressure and converts it to an FiO2. So the more pressure on top of that sensor, the higher the FiO2 is going to read. This is important that you know this for troubleshooting. All right, so the accuracy after you get it calibrated, it should read true, right? Okay, but the accuracy is affected by water on the sensor. So you can't use it in a flow of oxygen that is humidified because the water particles on the humidity or the aerosol will condense on that sensor. You know, you'll have droplets of water and that water weighs something. It bears down, creates more pressure, and your analyzer will read falsely high. Okay, so water on the sensor will make, make it read falsely high. High pressures, okay, so if you have this oxygen analyzer in a ventilator circuit and you're ventilating with very high peak inspiratory pressures, you've got a lot of peep, you know, if you've got a lot of pressure in that circuit, that, that sensor picks up that pressure and is going to read falsely high. And then altitude will make a difference. Here I am in Texas, but if I took my oxygen analyzer that I, I um, calibrated in Weatherford, Texas, and I took it to the top of Pikes Peak, the change in elevation changes the partial pressure that's bearing down on it. So anytime that altitude is an issue or barometric pressure is an issue, you need to recalibrate your oxygen analyzer. Okay, so those are the main things that cause problems. They can measure continuous flows of oxygen. They just can't be flows that are humidified or have aerosol in them. They require a two-point calibration. Two points, 21% and 100%. So what you do, let me just roll this back to our picture. This sensor, you literally just hold it up to room air. That's 21%. You should get a reading of plus or minus 2%, meaning when I hold it up to room air, I'd like it to read 21%. But as long as it reads um, 21, um, 19 to 23, we're good, a plus or minus 2%. 
Then we put that sensor in a 100% environment. So one way to do it is to take a glove, put the sensor inside the glove, wrap the glove around an oxygen flow meter and turn the flow on. Inside that glove, you have a 100% environment. The analyzer should read 100% plus or minus two. Okay, that is called a two-point calibration. All right, you've got an error of plus or minus 2%. So on a galvanic fuel cell, this is why I told you, remember it is a galvanic fuel cell. If you cannot get it to calibrate at, with that 2% calibration, if you're off more than plus or minus 2%, the only thing that you can do is change that fuel cell. Okay, remember I said that fuel cell had an electrolyte solution in it? Well, when that electrolyte solution kind of evaporates and dries up, it doesn't work. And you have to replace it. That's all you can do with a fuel cell. Okay, so if you understand that, polarographic oxygen analyzers, which this, if you see one in the hospital, this will be the one that you see. Lots and lots of similarities, okay? It's similar to the galvanic fuel cell but it has a battery in it, okay? So the battery speeds up that chemical reaction that we talked about. And when you speed up that chemical reaction, you'll have a faster response time. So polarographic oxygen analyzers give you really rapid readings, all right? So again, kind of works the same way. It measures the partial pressure and it converts that partial pressure to a percentage, just like the galvanic. It's affected by the same thing, anything that bears down on that sensor, right? Water on the sensor, altitude and pressure, all right? You're gonna calibrate it the same way as a galvanic, 21% and 100%. Now here's your difference. On a polarographic oxygen analyzer, if you're unable to calibrate it, let's say you bring it to 21 and 100% and you're off by more than plus or minus 2%, if you're off just a little bit, you can adjust the calibration control. So somewhere on the device, on the front plate, or on the side plate, or on the top, there's going to be a button or a knob that's called the calibration control. So let's say that I put this, if I'm doing a two-point cal and I expose it to room air and it says 24%, I'm gonna use that calibration control to turn it down just a little bit. I'm just gonna tweak it just a little bit so it's in that accept, acceptable plus or minus 2%, okay? So the very first thing is adjusting the calibration control if you are off just a little bit. Now, you're, if you're off more than just a little bit, like it's, it's a huge difference that you're off when you're, when you're doing your two-point calibration, the second thing you wanna do is change the battery. Okay, that battery speeds up that chemical reaction and without it, it may be responding so slowly you're not getting a reading, all right? So change out that battery. Um, it, it will speed up that reaction and probably will fix the problem. This is the most common thing with oxygen analyzers. If we can't get them to calibrate, it's this. The third thing is to change the sensor. Now be very careful. I said sensor and I meant sensor on a polarographic oxygen analyzer. This thing right here still has the electrolyte solution in it, okay? Same as a galvanic fuel cell. We call it a fuel cell on the galvanic and a sensor on the polarographic, okay? So the third thing to do if it doesn't calibrate is to change out that sensor the electrolyte solution dried out on it. So we do have a couple of them, of them in our lab and I pretty much have to change out the sensors on these every year, year and a half, because by then that electrolyte solution has all been evaporated and used up and doesn't work anymore, okay? So three things in this order. If it doesn't calibrate, number one, adjust the calibration control if you're just a little bit off. Number two, change the battery. Third thing, change the sensor, okay? So hope this has helped. This should cover most of the questions that you encounter on the TMC or CSC. See you soon.